Hi everyone, my name is Daniel. Welcome to my channel. I have been wanting to make this video and that joke for quite a while now. I'm finally feeling settled into my new studio space and I'm super excited to be talking to you all about this today. This is a video for folks who are interested in starting to get into uh, writing, recording, or producing electronic music at home. This is meant to be a basic foundations video, a sort of springboard for you to jump off of and reference as you dive into the pool of electronic music the ocean of electronic music. That's much better. I'd love to talk to you about your experiences, your general creative process, or any of your music down in the comments below. So definitely feel free to share to get a discussion going. Well, without further ado, let's hop into the fundamentals of what you need to get started making electronic music at home. So the first thing you'll need is an audio interface and a digital audio workstation. A digital audio workstation is frequently referred to as a DAW, like D-A-W. So if you hear DAW, that's what it's referring to, a digital audio workstation. It's just software you use to record your music onto a computer. This is where you will record and save the individual parts or tracks onto your computer as you play them. And within the program, you can edit, rearrange, add effects, do mixing and mastering, pretty much everything you would need to do to get a professionally prepared, polished piece of music. There are a huge number of options for DAWs, and a lot of electronic musicians gravitate towards Ableton Live. It has a lot of really great performative capabilities, I've heard. I'm not too familiar with it myself. I've never used it, actually. I use Logic Pro 10. I started on GarageBand. It's free and it comes installed on iPhones, iPads, and any Mac product. And I progressed to Logic Pro because it was the natural progression. It's like the professional version of GarageBand and it was what was available to me at the time. So I'm currently primarily making music on synth hardware. I'm doing pretty heavy mixing and editing on the hardware that I'm using. And hardware just refers to like a, a physical instrument or device, whereas software refers to the computer program. So I'm doing most of the heavy lifting on the hardware and then importing that into Logic Pro to do final tweaks, edits, equalization, and some basic mixing to get a more polished product. I've never felt disadvantaged by using Logic Pro, even though it might not be what most electronic musicians use. And I've just found it really user-friendly and easy to get along with. So yeah, I personally use a DAW like a tool at the end of a chain. Some people are what they would refer to as an in-the-box producer, which means that they pretty much do everything in their DAW. But I like to use it as a tool, as kind of a tool that I would use at any step in the process. I don't rely too heavily on it, um, but there definitely is room for growth and learning on that side of things for me. But the only way to figure out what workflow is going to be best for you is to kind of try it all and see what sticks. There is definitely no right or wrong approach to making electronic music. So you might be wondering, how do you get your sound into the DAW? How do you actually record the music? Well, that's a good question. And for that, you will need an audio interface. An audio interface is just a device that allows you to transfer the sound into a digital signal into your computer so you can record on the DAW. It is a pretty necessary component unless you are recording everything analog and not using a computer at all. Or you could use a separate digital recording device if you want to do that. But this is the workflow I use. Interfaces can be really simple or really complicated with one input or or a dozen inputs. I recently went through a minor studio upgrade. I just kind of upgraded my mic and my audio interface, and I went from a two input interface to another higher end two input interface. As a one man operation, I track everything kind of on its own. I don't really feel the need to have a bunch of inputs. So I went from the Scarlett Focusrite 2i2 to the Universal Audio Apollo Solo. There are a ton of great affordable options for audio interfaces, and I'll link a bunch of them below in the description for you to check out. I would definitely recommend the Scarlett 2i2 for a beginner. Um, it's super affordable, it's really easy to use, and you could probably find them secondhand on Reverb for super cheap. So next on the list is a pair of headphones or studio monitors. Simply put, this is so you can listen to the music before, during, and after you record it. Ideally, you wanna get something that is designed for monitoring sound. So that is something with a flat EQ response. Many consumer level headphones and speakers will alter the sound at certain frequencies so that it will sound better based on what the manufacturer thinks may benefit certain genres of music. But for listening back to your own music as you're recording it, you want that mix to be as transparent as possible. So you don't want any sort of highlights or dips along the EQ curve. That said, I think it's super important, especially when you're getting started, to listen to the music that you've made on multiple devices after you are getting close to the end. You wanna be able to tell what frequencies or certain sounds are gonna stand out or perhaps not stand out as much, depending on the device you're listening through. So you're probably really familiar with your car speakers, maybe your phone speaker, or Apple earbuds. A lot of people listen to music on those things, so it's important to kind of listen back 
through those devices to see what it will sound like for a majority of the people who will be listening to the music. Anyways, I use these Sennheiser headphones. They're a pretty budget option and I really like them. I will link to those and a few other options that I was considering at the time in the description. I will say that I use headphones more often than I use speakers to monitor and that can be kind of controversial. A lot of people say you should just use really flat monitors in a treated room, but you're making music at home. You don't necessarily have the budget or the space to treat a room. And I feel more comfortable with my headphones. I know how they respond to certain frequencies and kind of what things will sound like on other sound systems or headphones based on how they sound on my main pair of headphones. So yeah, it's just about being able to have a good reference, know what things will sound like on other systems and adjust them accordingly in your mix. Okay, so now we're getting to the fun stuff. Well, I guess in my opinion, it's all kind of fun to talk about, but now I wanna cover sound sources or instruments. For our purposes here, an instrument is just gonna reference anything that creates sound. This could be acoustic instruments, hardware synthesizers, software synths with Anadaw, any effects or samplers you might be using. And I think the greatest thing about recording electronic music is that you can implement literally anything you want to. You can utilize any instrument you'd like and kind of have the freedom to make it sound however you want to. As a genre and production style, electronic music can really cover a lot of territories. And genre is a fuzzy thing and I don't wanna get into it too much. I just refer to the process that I'm using as electronic music production because I'm using a lot of electronics. And even the organic and acoustic sounds I am using, I'm manipulating pretty heavily to make them sound like they are not what they are. Anyways, back to instrument options. A lot of people just use a MIDI keyboard to record within the DAW. This is an example of a MIDI keyboard. It's the Arteria Keystep. And a MIDI keyboard doesn't make any sound on its own. Rather, it communicates with software to tell the software how to play the sounds you have designated. And I should probably mention MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. A couple of the main things that it can communicate are pitch and velocity. Pitch is the pitch of a note, how high or low it sounds, and velocity is a representation of how hard a note is played, which a lot of the time translates to loudness. When I started off making electronic music, all I was using was a MIDI keyboard and a DAW. It was a great way to learn how to navigate Logic Pro, and it was really helpful to start off. And it's also a super portable setup too, all you need is a little keyboard and a laptop. I eventually learned how to implement guitar into my process and my background is guitar and drumming. So I tend to use a lot of guitar samples and processed percussion in my songs now. But again, I can kind of do whatever I want to make that guitar sound like totally different source material. It allows me to play the instruments that I love to play, but also to implement my creativity in a different part of the creative process. And to me, it's really the best of both worlds to be able to do that. I also use a ton of synths and other people's synth samples in my music. I like to process those through my modular synth, and then I like to track them onto either the Digitact or the OP1, which are both hardware synths that have a lot of uh, strong sequencing capabilities. I have a couple of videos on those if you want to check them out. But I'll typically arrange a performance on one of those devices, record that live performance into my DAW, and then just do some final editing in Logic before exporting the song. So one of the final considerations you might want to make when building up your studio is getting a microphone. Depending on what you're recording, it could be really beneficial for you to have a microphone to capture an acoustic instrument like a guitar or your voice or other ambient audio. Microphone is a very broad term, so you could even say your phone is a microphone. I very frequently use the Voice Memos app on my iPhone to record field sounds and things in nature, and then I'll process them with other synths and use them in a mix. Zoom handheld recorders are also perfect for this. This is a Zoom recorder, it's the H4n Pro, and I use it to record voiceovers for my videos, and in the past I've used it to record modular performances as well. Uh, this mic right here is the Shure SM7B. This is my favorite microphone I have. It's an industry standard and it's for a good reason. It's just a very solid kind of low mid-range budget mic. It's really versatile and I like the way it sounds on my voice. So I tend to use it when I talk to the camera and also for voiceovers for my tutorial videos. I upgraded that from the Shure SM57, which is another industry standard. And for a couple of years when I was playing with the band, I used it for vocals whenever we played live. I just like the characteristic of it and, and the way that it picks my voice up. I also wanna mention, I have another video on my channel with some smaller gadgets that I think are essential to my personal workflow. Um, these are little things, some of them are non-musical, they just help with studio setup, and I've found that my process of making music is greatly enhanced and just made all around more efficient by having some of these items. So definitely check that out if you're interested. So 
Now that you know everything that you need to make electronic music at home, the next question you need to ask yourself is how and where to start. In my opinion, it's really important to know your musical and creative strengths before diving in. You need to consider what you want to accomplish with your musical process. I'm not saying you have to commit to any one genre or style of music, but it does help to have some sort of a direction to inform your preliminary process. If you do have a musical background or inclination toward any particular genre, then this is obviously a great starting point for you. For example, maybe you're a singer, but you're really interested in learning how to make beats on a drum machine and you want to play a physical instrument. There are so many options for physical groove boxes, and in this case, it would be good to do some research and potentially get a microphone and a sampler that can record audio. So you could play around with your voice in the sampler, but also use percussion samples to make beats. Or you could just do this all in a DAW. It just depends on if you prefer a software or a hardware workflow. The sky is really the limit when making these choices, which is one of the biggest challenges here. It can be really easy to procrastinate or spin your wheels when option paralysis gets in the way. And for me, this is one reason I have found solace in synth hardware. Hardware synths are typically more structured in their workflow and their form. When you compare it to something like a blank audio session in a DAW. And for me again, personally, I know that limitations tend to bring out my creativity. But again, everyone is different. It helps to know yourself and to be able to nudge yourself in a particular direction and play to your creative strengths and general musical interests as you go through this process. Anyways, that's all I have for today. I hope you found something useful in this video and at the very least enjoyed it. If you made it this far, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I have a lot of other similar informative content about synth hardware, music in general, and I have a lot of tutorials too on some specific instruments that I really like to use. Anyways, I'm going to sign off here. Thanks again so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.